is the break here on Rise News and it's time for the press preview. A first look at what's on the front pages of the papers. And as usual, we start with our sister publication, uh, This Day Newspaper. And on this day on its front page, INEC saying to political parties, see March 18 elections not as a war, but a contest. He has some riders there. It says... Uh, Pledges to set up legal team to handle cases of electoral offences uh, expeditiously. Uh, permits PDP APC legal teams to inspect presidential election materials. And call uh, your lieutenants to other NSA tells political gladiators. There you see the picture of the vice president uh, and then the minister of finance. The launch of investment in digital and creative enterprise, of course, uh, uh, additional there also. And then in the white, well, white was written in white, but black stripe, uh, strip. I made you weak, uh, drunk, spends 50 million naira weekly. That is Amechi talking. And then, of course, you have those pictures there of the governorship candidates in Delta State. Uh, Ken talked about that earlier. Debate on Arise News. Uh, channel today five leading contestants for the uh, seat of governor of delta state would today look lock horns in a debate being organized by arise news channel at 7 p.m uh, the program will run for two hours 30 minutes and will feature of course all those candidates of vm or Marga gepella that we talked about earlier and then look at the, the, the top uh the just above the nameplate of this day banks begin dispensing Old 500 naira, 1,000 notes via ATMs over the counter. That will be it for this day. The Punch newspaper is leading with the money. Naira crisis, banks ration old notes. The Labour Congress insists on seven-day ultimatum. Review 1,000 naira NIN fee. Council tells NIMSI. Oh, your SDP candidate withdraws, backs Makinde. INEC will prosecute electoral offenders with speed. All right, let's look at the Daily Sun. Guba National Assembly polls. NSA gives military security agencies marching orders. I had some two riders there. Orders them to crush. Oh, well, that, that sounds like a military term. It says crush electoral offenders. Army uh, chief urges soldiers to be professional and above board. You look at uh, just that uh, story beside the song title. It says, Ohanez, election Ohanez asked federal government to address threat to Igbo in Lagos, Rivers, and others. And then, okay, presidential election, PDP, Artiku, returned to tribunal with fresh application. Uh, that's, that's it for the song. i just take that for the song. The Tribune. Uh, governorship poll more complicated than presidential and sa wounds presidential election 12 million attempts made to hack nigeria's cyberspace and banks comply with cbn directive and the guardian show now a crisis show slow compliance despite cbn order banks russian old notes some writers Business owners, traders defy CBN, reject old 500 naira 1000. CBN silent on return bank notes, warehouse cash. Residual notes amount to drop in ocean, analysts insist. Huriwa okay. charges CBN to disburse old new notes uh, to uh, banks. Just, just some other stories there. Rule of law. Over 130 CSOs, lawyers insist. Bauer must go don president Igbo senator with efcc baggage as senate president says ohaneze i wonder who they are talking about there all right uh, the international papers this is the financial times hunt to unveil budget for growth with billions pledged for business all right uh independent the independent newspaper uh, the row between BBC and Gary Lineker is still on. Now, Gary Lineker turns to BBC. Star changes Twitter profile picture to image of him in front of free speech wall at TV headquarters. Uh, that's that's Lineker and Lineker at BBC. 
the I free child care boost in budget with 30 hours a week extra for toddlers. And then just the Guardian newspaper before we bring in uh, Emmanuel Bello. Hunts four billion pounds child care bed to get parents back to work. BBC pressured by number 10 over pandemic reports and Russian jet collides with US drone over Black Sea. We talked about that earlier. And then we're bringing Emmanuel Bell. Emmanuel Bell, glad to join. Have you join us this morning. Uh, mm, yeah. All right, let's look at some stories uh, on this day newspaper. Of course, the debate there uh, between the governorship candidates in Delta State, and then you have INEC warning political parties, take this as a contest, not a war. And the NSC also giving a warning uh, on that front page. And of course, the story of Wiki, uh, former governor of uh, River State, uh, alleging that Wiki's, uh, Wiki is drunk. He spends 50 million naira weekly on alcohol. I don't know what you make of these stories, Imano. How is that even possible? <laughs> we were discussing it. Well, in yeah. I mean, and uh, uh, someone quipped that, well, there could be, uh, what, uh, uh, Kenneth, you say there are 40-year-old whiskeys? Yeah, I mean, the they're, and, they're, uh, they're that expensive. So maybe he's no, purchasing but not 50 million the expensive. old ones. <laughs> <laughs> uh, those really expensive ones and well, I think the, the, as, the, as the weeks go by. Uh, uh, the aspect of the story that I find interesting is that uh, it's, it's coming from Amechi they, uh, and it's uh, because he's, he's uh, you know, uh, actually rooting for his candidate, uh, Toye Ko. And so I think he's making a distinction between um, how sober his candidate can be compared to the drunkenness or the lifestyle of Wiki. It's not, Wiki a, is not, it's not, it's, it's not the first time, well, he has, he has a house in the race. So it's not a, or a dog in the race. It's not the first time people have queried uh, Wiki's uh, you know, antics and behavior. And uh, some people even trying to find reasons, psychological reasons for why Wiki talks the way he does and everything. But Amechi is putting it squarely on the, you know, on the doorstep of alcohol. And it's it's not just living like that. It's talking about the amount of money he spent, and it's you know it, it's still part of the you know the campaign season, uh, saying that those are the kind of amount fifty million that he spent in building uh, primary school. So essentially, Wiki has actually drank uh, an, an entire project of uh, of a school. That's what he's saying. Uh, it's still in the campaign season where. Uh, you know, opponents are trying to run down the other person and uh, bringing out aspect of their lives and everything. And probably that's why I neck the list story uh, to the list story of DZ saying that this is not war, uh, but it seems, should be seen as contest. Politicians hardly see elections as uh, just what it is, uh, a contest for uh, the people's mind and for, for votes. Uh, but they, they sometimes try to go overboard. And the NSA is already saying why this uh, election is more complicated than the last election last week. But if anything, I think Nigerians are really ready to vote for candidates of their choice. And it is the INEC itself that Nigeria wants to be talking to that, look, we have to just get it right this time. Um, of course, INEC is here uh, talking to the people and saying, look, we want um, you know, a, a rank of free election. But I can assure you, uh, Indy, that a lot of Nigerians are also worried about INEC, what INEC is doing, how prepared INEC is, the transparency of the umpire, the fact that um, uh, they watch the system in such a way that people are not rigged out or the wheels of the people are so those are the sort of things that worry the minds of people. Not, I, I don't see Nigerians really ready to go and snatch you know, the ballot boxes or even cause confusion or try to fight. Uh, they seem to be more worried about how prepared uh, you know, and how transparent uh, these beavers will be and how transparent. So those are the sort of things that Nigerians want to be hearing from INEC, their state of preparedness, because compared to uh, what happened uh, weeks ago in the presidential election, more Nigerians are wary about whether their vote will count this time around. So yeah, I want to say that INEC is uh, it should be telling uh, Nigerians a different thing. It's a good call, too, that yes, uh, this, this should not be war and that this is more complicated, like the INEX is saying. But Nigerians are more worried about uh, the role of INEX, the fact that, look, if we cast our votes, will they, will they count? Will there be any form of rigging? Will there be any form of you know, uh, interference from the umpire? That seems to be the biggest worry of, uh, you know, of, uh, of Nigerians. The Guardian is reporting slow compliance despite the central bank's order and the uh, banks are rationing the old notes. Um, I still do not have uh, Naira notes. Um, mo many customers are still uh, joining queues to get some. Um, what, ro what role will this cash play this Saturday, Emmanuel? And uh, should we expect some easing before the weekend? Well, we're getting some assurances that that will happen. Uh, but with CBN saying it's going to, uh, you know, put in more 
uh, more money. I was asking earlier if, uh, because I've not seen those old notes myself, the 1,500. But uh, the, the reports uh, we have is that people are now collecting them because um, in, in the last few weeks, nobody was, they were still not legal tenders. But for now, uh, we learned people are receiving them. Yes, and Kenneth, you asked a very interesting question. What is the nexus? What's the relationship between these and the elections? Well, uh, politicians still need money to, you know, to pay for ads and to, to take care of logistics uh, around uh, this election. So this, um, well, this is like good news uh, because it's going to ease off the crisis of uh, you know, those transfers that they have to make and then it's not making any headways, especially when they have to buy, uh, get, I mean, pay for uh, services, and, uh, the, especially in the areas of adverts, in the areas of you know, just moving men and material to the place of, a, of election. So uh, yes, there will be some kind of ease and compete to you know the, uh, the the dreary situation we have uh, at the presidential election where nothing was just uh, happening so maybe this yes we ease it off uh, a, a, a little just a little a little bit but I think the the bulk of the story is the the crisis of avail availability uh, with a lot of people saying they still can access this money and hoping that CBN is going to pump more of it in the economy uh, so that you know our lives can go back to uh, to normal. Someone uh, kind of joked about it yesterday that uh, while people were actually jumping fences to return those old notes to the banks, now they have to stay longer queues again to get them back. It's a sort of kind of ridiculous situation, frustration that Nigeria find themselves uh, this season. Interesting. Uh, there's a story in one of those papers, I think it's a son, uh, uh, where the NSA is giving military and security agencies matching orders, and it says orders them to crush. That's the word he used, electoral offense. Very harsh word, too. Yeah, I don't know what you make of it. Immediately I read that, I said, this, this sounds like a military uh, term. So I don't know what you make of it. An army chief urges soldiers to be professional above board. And then INEC says they will prosecute electoral offenders. Do they have that, the power to do that? Yes, and they said they will do it expeditiously. That is, yeah. they will do it immediately. So if you are, going to, if you are caught on election day uh, doing something funny, you get, you know, you get treated, you get, the, uh, you get uh, judgment. Uh, charged judgment immediately. So you don't have to be, I don't know whether they will have to charge you to court or whether there's going to be some mobile court. Uh, but yes, uh, but again, you know, tie uh, this to what, you know, the Disney report about elections not being war but contest. Uh, the NSA using words like crush as if, uh, but again, uh, it's, the, it's, this, it's the sort of thing that you have in third world developing countries around elections that uh, they turn out to be, uh, you know, very, very bloody. They turn out to be very, we don't, the presidential election didn't witness too much of those kind of violence. But like the NSA is, is saying, uh, this is different. This is more complicated. There are more constituencies to be dealt with, close to a thousand of those constituencies. So he is saying that uh, compared to the presidential election that has just got one seat of the president, some numbers of the Senate and uh, House of Representatives, this is a much more wider uh, situation. Some people think that if INEC was having difficulties with the presidential election, that is a much more smaller uh, situation. What happens now that we're going to have elections in, um, in, in, in you know, close to a thousand uh, constituencies? They worry that INEC might not be on ground. But that's, that's, that's one fear. The other fear is how to police, how to uh, maintain security, how to maintain some kind of law and order in this election. And that is where the NSA uh, is uh, uh, spitting fire and saying that they're going to crush anyone that is going to... Well, it's a warning to everyone because uh, there will be life after election. So what's the point uh, dying on election day? Well, if you choose to, what's the point some dying? people don't want to stay. <laughs> well, yeah, so it's timely warning that, look, um, they just go cast your vote, go home, and then wait for the results. Uh, uh, that's what I think is, uh, is rationing. But like I said, a lot of Nigerians probably uh, get frenzied uh, when they think that, look, there are some kind of un underhanded kind of uh, uh, plot uh, to enfranchise them or to actually steal their votes. I think that's where people get agitated. But if, you know, with these reassurances that INA can do a, a good job and that people can be secure to actually go cast their vote, I think a lot of Nigerians are dying to uh, do, uh, just cast their vote and see the kind of desired changes that they want to see happen. All right, well, there are two stories, if we have the time. Uh, just briefly, very, very briefly. The Ohanese asking FG to, oh, well, 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 that wasn't even the one I wanted to take. Okay, presidential election, PDP, I think we return to the tribunal with fresh application. But that story on Ohana is asking Edgy to address threat to Igbo in Lagos, Rivers, and others. I don't know what you make of it. 
Well, that's very important because I think the Igbos have become a targeted group in some, in some of these places, like in Lagos. At least they've complained about it, and uh, that needs to be fact-checked. But, uh, but the complaints are there that, you know, in Lagos, I, I just, uh, especially in the socials, you have uh, those worries that the Igbos have become a targeted group in those places because of their sheer number and their determination to actually bring some kind of changes uh, that, uh, you know, the, uh, what the, the indigents, the people themselves, do not expect that that uh, could happen. So Ohanese is calling out, uh, you know, uh, very timely that look, protect our people. It's not just a call from uh, Ohanese. Elections need to, people need to be protected. Uh, they, but th that, another bit of a story from Ohanese, I don't know in the way if you, if you know that, where they're saying that, well, they, they, are, they seem to have, they seem to be ready. They seem to be ready for the Senate president, and now they are even telling the That's president. That's what I actually yeah, want. Okay, to well, they are telling the president. So you can see a shift. I think people are beginning to gradually shift into the Tinubu era. The idea that look, they are going to actually represent a Senate president. In fact, with names even jotting up, but even now them, the one is saying, well, let it not be someone that is tainted by some kind of EFCC probe. I don't know who they are talking about. I don't know. But they are, this, you can yeah, see one of the, the one of the shifting. candidates. Yeah, one of the candidates. Well, in jail. As, oh, okay. Well, so Eagle candidates. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. The the you have. All Jews of color has been in prison. And well, I think was released. is he one of the people touted for that position? But the, the thing for me is that you, uh, Oanese seem to be. I mean, it, it goes. It, it's, also, it's almost as if they are already accepting. That, uh, well, look, they were talking about EFCC, EFCC yeah. who has an EFCC baggage. Is in the Guardian. Yes. Don't present Igbo senator with EFCC baggage. As in the president says, Ohanese. So, so who could be the president? About. But for me, the big story there is that, look, Ohanese seems to be saying, look, yes, we're ready to serve in a Tinubu administration. If you consider the other story that we're dealing with, that will be still in court, or uh, stay at the tribunal, everything. Or it could be a case that, look, hey, let's make some progress while that is going on. Whatever it is, it's interesting that uh, these are even talks now about the roles that all other people can play in what in the presidency that a lot of people are still trying to you know figure out whether they are going to accept it or not accept it uh, but it's like reality is dawning on everyone that look hey maybe this is just here to stay and so they're beginning to actually talk about uh, the kind of uh, officials or the kind of uh, people to serve in that regime thanks emmanuel bella for your insight this morning that's the press preview you can have your say follow us on twitter at arise tv